The first step a cell takes in decoding a segment of its genetic information is transcribing the DNA nucleotide sequence into an RNA sequence. Although both are written in the same language, composed of bases A, G and C, RNA contains uracil instead of thymine. Historically, DNA received all the attention in the field of nucleic acid research, however discovery of post-transcription modifications to RNA has balanced the focus. Across species, more than 170 natural modified nucleosides have been documented. These modifications have emerged as an important facet of gene expression and regulation. In 1951, the first modified nucleoside was discovered in calf liver RNA. It was named pseudouridine. It's formed by pseudouridine synthesizers, which rotate the uridine base by 180 degrees, resulting in an extra hydrogen bond donor. Such physical alterations cause increased stability of the unstable RNA structure. The widespread discovery of pseudouridine in ribosomal and transfer RNA indicated it had to be functionally important, despite not knowing why or how. Nonetheless, this was a groundbreaking contribution that proved RNA could be modified after transcription had occurred. 1961 marked the grand discovery of messenger RNA, an intermediary carrying the nucleotide sequence from the nucleus to the cytoplasm for protein synthesis. The field of RNA modification continued to receive attention as more nucleosides were being discovered. However, they were yet to be found in mRNA. A decade later, the first modifications of mRNA were uncovered when poly-A tail-based purification techniques were developed. This technique can isolate mRNA by taking advantage of the fact that unlike other RNA, mRNA molecules have an adenine chain tail. In 1993, Bakken and Offengan developed the ability to map the position of pseudouridine with single nucleotide resolution. Their method took advantage of CMC because it is selective for pseudouridine and can block reverse transcription. However, these assays were time consuming and best utilised in highly abundant RNAs, not mRNA. At the turn of the century, focus turned to injection of artificial pseudouridine in mRNA due to evidence it could suppress the immune system. It had also been established that abnormal levels of pseudouridine within RNA leads to serious hereditary diseases. All the while, natural mRNAs that contained pseudouridines remained undiscovered, but the curtain was about to come down. Kalal and researchers from MIT finally provided answers in 2014 thanks to a technique for rapid transcriptome-wide identification of pseudouridine in mRNA. Their method, known as pseudoC, involves first modifying random poly A fragments with mock-treated and treated CMC. Then, RNA undergoes size selection followed by reverse transcription which is blocked by pseudouridine CMC. The segment is then amplified with PCR and the results are computationally analyzed against the known transcriptome database. Khalil's team were able to determine hundreds of naturally occurring pseudouridine sites in mRNA of yeast cells and human cells. In both organisms, they compared two cellular conditions with substantial differences in gene expression and physiology. In yeast, log phase and post-dioxic growth, in human cells in the presence or absence of serum for 24 hours. There were 260 pseudouridines and 238 protein coding transcripts detected in yeast and 96 pseudouridines and 89 human mRNAs. Sequencing identified growth state dependent changes in the extent of mRNA modifications. Researchers also sought to define the reason for targeting of mRNA sites for pseudouridylation by the PUS families. Pseudoseq identified double the number of known PUS1 and PUS2 sites and it combined 24 novel sites and three other families. Furthermore, they provided the first demonstration of regulated pseudouridylation by these enzymes. Such findings are vital for understanding how diseases are associated with mutations in pseudouridine synthesis. The data indicated that pseudouridines are frequently distributed in evolutionarily conserved and functionally important regions. These findings, alongside the fact the pseudouridine landscape is regulated in response to environmental cues, indicates the mechanism's regulated pseudouridylation is likely preserved from yeast to humans. Khalil's paper caused a large resurgence in research of pseudouridine in mRNA, spawned from the fact if we know where pseudouridine sites are, we can understand what they do. The pseudo-C technique, alongside similar sequencing technologies, was confirmed on other organisms in the years following. Determining the widespread existence of pseudouridine in mRNA, as well as its regulation, opened the door to various avenues of investigation. On a broader scale, the prospect that pseudouridine could provide a regulated rewiring of the genetic code drew further attention. Pseudouridine was found to have roles beyond stabilizing RNA, such as stop codon read-through and modulating protein translation. 
In doing so, it could control cellular development and adaptations to environmental stimuli. Many questions still remain to be answered about the most abundant modification in RNA, and the biological roles of most pseudouridines remain unknown.